If you are a solo indie game developer or work with a small team and want to do this professionally, you can't waste your time making your own assets. Being able to find and create good assets is an essential skill every game developer must have. Even people from AAA studios are outsourcing the assets all the time, so they are browsing the internet for to find anything that will fit the project, or they are reusing pro um, assets from previous projects as well, or they are outsourcing this for a with a third-party studio. Anyway, being able to actually outsource your work is a fundamental skill if you want to be a professional. There was a debate recently on Twitter, I think that this weekend, about whether a solo developer that outsource, for instance, art is actually an solo dev is actually a solo developer. Guys, this <laughs> this is such a dumb, such a dumb debate because the idea of a solo developer is: can you handle a company by yourself? Can you handle a project by yourself? And being able to handle a project is being humble enough to say, I can make this with the quality that I want to provide for my customer. People are always so focused on the, the creator and they forget about the customer. So there are so many, <laughs> so many crap shit out there made by solo people, but they have some kind of prestige because they made it all oh, their own. Oh, it, it doesn't matter that the art is just crappy, but they made it it's from their own hand. Guys, this should be <laughs> something that we should discuss. We should be always thinking about, is this good for my player? Can I make good art for my player? Can I make good code, good mechanic for my player? Or should I make this, or should I outsource this? Should I part, uh, make a partnership with a third party studio or something like that to make this for me? This is something that we should be debating. It's not about, oh, you did this by your own or not, and give some prestige somehow even even though the quality is shit they will give the prestige or the, the excuse that they did then they did that by their own this is not something that we should be debating we should be debating is this a good game or it isn't a good game and this is all from the player's perspective from the customer perspective Anyway, after this rant, I want to say that in this video, we are going to talk about how you can develop this skill, how you can find good assets, how you can create these assets, how you can manage them so that you can reuse them in further projects, in future projects, or get inspired by something that you find on the internet and get some idea about, like, oh, I can make a game with this, or I can make a game about this. So in this video, we are going to see how we can find and create good assets. There are many sources of gaming assets on the internet. So for instance, we have opengameart.org, which is an excellent one. We have craftpix.net. We also have gamemarket.net. We have ArtStation, of course, and many, many, many more. But in this video, we are going to focus on my favorite one, which is itch.io. This is a platform focused on game developers, so it's an excellent, excellent place to start with. And we are going to see how we can browse game assets, how we can use tags to filter them, and how we can save them into a collection so that we can go back and see, get inspired by them and see which one fits our project better. And also, later on in this video, we are going to see how we can use Notion to manage these assets so that we can add other metadata that are relevant for us. So let's get started. And now well, here on Itch, to start with, we can go to browse, and hovering it browse, we can go to assets, or you can click browse, and instead of games, you can choose game assets. Some assets, such as plugins and other tools, are tagged as tools. So if you are looking for plugins or tools that will help you, which with your game development, your the game development, you can look for tools as well. So for instance, we have a, a, a sprite here, which is an excellent tool to make uh, pixel art sprites. But we are going back to game assets. And well, there are many, many results here. So you can see that we have 5,600 5, <laughs> more, almost 5,700 uh, results here. So <laughs> there is a lot of, of resources for us to browse, but I'm looking for something very specific. I'm looking for some good platform assets, which will include UI and well, player enemies, Tile, uh, tile sets as well, Just, this is very important for me. So instead of looking uh, manually for, for this, time, this kind of stuff, 
I will basically just uh, click here on the tag platformer. This will filter a lot of results. So almost 10% of the results are tagged as uh, platformer assets. So from this, I will make a, a small research here. You can follow along. So I'll try to look for, let's see. I think that this one, yeah, Pixel Frog is a good one. I'm using Pixels, Pixel Frog, um, this one into my my other project, so Kings and Pigs. So I trust that his other assets are very good as well. So Treasure Hunters seems to be a very good one. We can see that we have a Tau set here, a main character probably. I think that players will play as this pirate. And we also have some enemies, so the Krusty Crew. What else does this have? Oh, we also have some hazards, so we have some traps here which is excellent for for making some game design this will be a good thing to to have and you can see that everything is alive and very animated so this is a very good asset you can see he even he or she even used some animations to showcase everything so so gifts this is an excellent page and we have a market ship a mer merchants <laughs> merchants Merchant ship, <laughs> uh, which is an excellent thing to have as well. Part treasures, items, so collectibles, so pickups and things like this. This is a very good asset. I think that I will go with this. So I just need to figure out if we have some. Yeah, UI. This is the the missing the, the missing link, and I'm definitely going to to use this one. So from from here, let's see how we can actually create this and save this on our manage managing tool so that we can come back here whenever we want whenever we need to create a platformer game and use this into our platformer game before we dive into notion i want to show you how i usually do uh, my collection so if i figure out that this is a good a good game a good game asset i will go to collections if i don't have one i will basically just uh, create a new one so let's say pirate pirate yeah Pirates. I would tell that this one is a private collection and I will talk some things about this asset so that it will help me or if this is a public collection this will help other people understand what this asset is useful for and what did I figure out that this asset has uh, in unique selling points about this asset for instance so I like that this is a complete this this is a complete asset pack with animations, hazards, enemies, player, UI, uh, what else? Yeah, so collectibles, collectibles, pickups, and even, um, and even a dungeon so the the part ship is like a dungeon right uh, and even a dungeon just excellent so i'll save this to my collection here on itch and well if we go to our collection so i'll go here and what, what is yeah my library you can see that well i have some uh, many stuff here and one of the, them are like for prototyping, so I have some K assets here as well. I have for sound effects. This one, the Tiny Alchemist, is a uh, an asset pack that is break, uh, broken down into many assets. Uh, Sci-fi assets. So I have like many uh, collections here. And oh, this one is another very good one from Pixel Frog, which is one that I want to use for. Um, RTS, so real-time strategy game. This is this will be my next project. So I hope you you have the patience to, to wait for this, for it. But well, that said, and now that you know some tools that you can use to create and and browse some assets, let's go to Notion so that we can manage them. My Notion main page. I have my personal stuff and my work stuff. And well, I have this management tab here, which I just created so that there isn't a lot of stuff here. Basically, there are assets, which I uh, I like to, to manage. 
so there are my own assets and other uh, third party assets as well so you can see that i already have some entries here and let's create the, the entry for this um this how is it called the treasure hunters asset so i will create a new one here and treasure hunters so treasure hunters tags so it's a pixel art it has characters players enemies i don't think that it has a boss but it has environment buildings style set props hazards user interface i don't know if if it comes with fonts yeah i don't think so uh there is animations which are frame by frame no visual effects top down isometric uh, side view okay these are the relevant metadata that i need to know if for instance i want to, uh, to look for a game of that uh, a, a asset that is side view for instance that is a for a side scroller or maybe a top down one so author i already have pixel frog here cloud backup path i don't have this because i don't have implemented so the cloud backup path is if i want to to save this on the cloud so for instance using uh, Dropbox or Drive or anything like that, but I couldn't don't don't have this um, description. I um, well, let me describe this, and I will come back after I make a good description. Yeah, so this is the description that I that I found that will help me the most. A pixel art set of sprites with human protagonists that has a good set of combat animations. It also portrays uh, three different enemies with idle, walk, jump, attack, hit, and death animations. There are three hazards as well, all long, long range. It. it also has some good props, including mer merchant ship, <laughs> barrel, treasure chest, uh, crate, keys, coins, floating schools, uh, diamond, emerald, ruby, small, medium, and big potions, and a map. On top of that, it has a beautiful tile set with a static. A uh, spike hazard and some palm trees and another tile set inside a ship plus a complete UI. This is the, the most complete description that I could come out with for this asset. And well, for the download link, I will just come back here. So just copy and paste this here. So for the general, there are some stuff that I use for general classification. So for instance, the game type or the the, the theme of the, the asset, so I will go with platformer fantasy. Yeah, oh, there are parts here, uh, but yeah, not it's not medieval nor, nor fantasy, so I'll just keep with these two. Good old version. So, um, usually when I import the asset on growth, for instance, and implement it, for instance, as a animated sprite 2D or some animations or controls or buttons texture buttons like this i will mark this as import uh, imported and i will choose the the growth version that this is imported in so this is important because uh for instance i have i'll show you one tool that i have here uh the, the asset bundler which is a tool that i made that we, i'll put the link in the description if you want to download it which basically just takes all the dependencies of a, a given asset and put them into a page inside your project on in Godot engine. So you just have to, to run this, select a scene, for instance, a packet scene and run this script and it will bundle everything into a single folder. And this was previously made in Godot 1, oh, in Godot 3. And well, after Godot 4 launched, I made the, the transition, I made, I, I ported it to Godot 4. But in the case of this dependency fixer, fixer one, uh, it is still on Godot 3 because in Godot 4 they implemented something called unique ID for assets and this completely broke this, this dependency fixer. This dependency fixer will basically just, you just have to select one asset and you run it and it will look into every sub resource that this asset has uh, every dependency and sub dependency and it will fix the path it, it will find out where in the project these dependencies are and it will fix everything for you but due to, to good at engine for changes this is not working anymore but i will put the link in the description if you are using good 3 this is an excellent tool to have uh, but back into our treasure hunt 
hunters yeah treasure hunters um asset Another thing that I like to do is to say the the, um, the license. So usually I use assets with uh, CC0, so basically just on public domain. And if I already downloaded them, uh, I put the path to uh, my file system into my local computer. And I also rate them and I call which type this, this asset is. So a texture, a script, a tool, a plugin, a sound, a music, or a 3D model in this case it's a texture so this is how I manage my my assets if I want to for instance I can basically just filter by let's say the the genre let's say I want a real-time strategy game and here is the the tiny swords so I open it I can go to the, the download, download link directly here and I'll be uh, I'll be lead to the tiny swords page so very easy to, to find good assets using uh, this kind of management tool. So the next thing that I want to talk about, we already brushed this a little bit, but is about maintaining your assets. So as I said, some assets I already have imported. So let's go back to this asset bundle, right? So this is the description, a tool script that gathers all the dependencies of a resource, including the scene or scene files and bundles them into a single folder useful to reuse scenes and resources across projects. This is a good description about what this tool does. And well, let's say that Godot 5 launches, right? So this tool would be on version 5 or version 4. So I have to maintain this tool because this is a very good tool that I use many, many times across my projects. So it's always good to have this up to date. So in case I already have this important into Godot and implemented in Godot engine, I like to maintain them, maintain them up to date. So this is something that I can do basically looking at filtering here and looking for the, the if they are imported or not. So if they are imported and which version of Godot they are. So let's say if Godot 5 launches, I will um, come with this too, so Godot 3 and 4, and well, I have to update them. And this doesn't work just for tool scripts, this also works for, uh, for instance, uh, uh, animated sprites, or animations, or like texture atlases, or anything. For instance, tile sets, if you want to update a tile set, for instance, uh, from Godot 3 to Godot 4, we have some minor change some major changes into how the the tile map and the tile sets work so it's always good to keep everything up to date with how things are currently so that you can basically just jump right into the, the assets again just copy and paste them into your new project and use them as you want the last thing that i want to talk about is this author property that i have here so there are many assets, there are many asset creators that have multiple asset packs, right? But the art style are kind of like the same. So for instance, with Pixel Frog, we have the Kings and Pigs asset pack, and we have this Treasure Hunters asset pack. But the art style and the general art direction is basically the same. So I think that we can mix and match these assets if we want to create a major, a, a more complex game with multiple, uh, for instance, multiple locations. And well, if you already played with Kenny's assets, there are hundreds and thousands of assets that Kenny creates, but the, the art style is kind of like the same. So they follow the same art unit, right? So for instance, you can filter them by author Kenny and tags like platformer or player if you want to just pick one player from an asset pack and well for environment and tile set if you want to use an asset pack from another tile set or another um, asset pack and well you can mix and match those to figure out something that will fit best for your project and talking about these authors i like to recommend some so for one of course kenny which is an amazing asset creator which are i think that kenny has more than 50 thousand assets at, at this point well unique assets at, at this point and well kenny is basically the king the king of free assets for uh, indie game creators but also of course pixel frog uh, pixel frog has a an excellent 
pixel art direction so i love his assets i love how um, the, the the way that he or she uses very saturated colors but at the same time they they manage to keep some balance but also i want to recommend k which is basically kenna's 3d counterpart so k has some excellent assets k, uh, k has a an excellent uh, dungeon crawler or dungeon uh, asset pack which i think that i use for uh, when i start to create 3d content but yeah k is the person that you should go for if you are looking for 3d assets and for sound effects i like to recommend chrome bits asset pack because uh, they have a i think that's 200 uh, sound effects for for your game so it it goes from um i think that is retro asset pack so retro sound effects but they are very good one they also have a paid version with i, I don't know how many assets uh, how many sound effects there are in the paid version but this is a, a good asset pack um there is also the, the sound effects for sci-fi which i recommend the shapes and forms uh, li uh, uh, audio library so th this is a, a library an asset pack with many many sound effects for sci-fi and they are all very high quality ones and for music which is an, a very particular thing so i personally don't recommend recommend using third party uh, or at least assets for music because music conveys very emotional feelings i would actually suggest you to hire someone to make the composition for your game because this is very particular this needs a very good identity but if you want to use some placeholders i would like to recommend johanny chiptunes pack so it's a chiptune pack with five music so uh, you have for you have one for the menu one for high beat one for low beat one for like something to to, to chill with and some credit music which you can use for place holding some stuff and testing out the feeling of your game and basically use for prototyping as well guys we are about to launch the pre-sales campaign for a course that will help you earn your first dollars by finishing and launching your games these management skills and many other skills are planned for the content of this course so if you are interested in becoming a professional indie game developer that actually finished and launches the the project and are able to earn money because there is no way there is no way that you earn money if you don't finish your stuff if you don't release your stuff so if you don't want to be a project hopper anymore and you actually want to finish your stuff and release them and be able to get a chance to earn money with your project subscribe to the big news my newsletter because by doing so you get notified when we launch the the campaign so you'll be able to be one of the first early birds and early birds will get a huge discount on this course and among other benefits as well so subscribe to the big news the link will be in the description Well, now that you know how you can find out and create some assets for your game and get inspired, what about taking the next step? What about making a prototype using these assets? I think that this will be a massive step to take. And if you manage to finish your project, please put the link in the description so other people can play your project as well. So let's let's get into this, this amazing feeling that is to have people playing your stuff. But that said, I would like to thank you so much for watching. Keep developing and until the next time. See you there.